if I look back through it and use a software analogy, if early 90s Clark's CAD was version 1.0, so in the first, first decade of this century we were on to version 1.5, what we needed was the impetus to push it into version 2. Version 2 started with SLA in about 1999-2000, but it was the advent of full colour 3D printing that really took, made it work for us. So we initiated a project, we, we do like our projects in Clark, we started a project to work out the best way forwards, and we weighed up different modes of, modes of various technologies, both in software and hardware, before finally alighting on a Z-Core machine. What we found with our experience of modeling last and modeling songs was that the key was realism. So shoes are a little bit like garments. When they're no, not being used, they relax. And we needed to somehow find a way of modeling that, that relaxation. And that's where I think we managed to mix the technologies, mix the software, to give us the sort of results that we need. So process. As I said, Two parts of the process. The first part is how I solved this, or how we solved this into Clark's company. And the second part is a little bit about how we create models. So, first of all, to get the company to agree or to buy into this te technology, we have to make competitive models. Secondly, make sure people know about it. So this is internally within the company. Third, make sure people know about it. Fourth, make sure people know about it. I've taken over the corporate screensaver, I've taken over the, 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 ca the internal cafe, I've taken over display cameras within the business. I've used every trick there is to make people within the company know what they can do, know what they can deliver. And that is fundamental to making this work in the conservative, in the older businesses. Finally, when people took notice, and they came along and said, OK, so what's the game? What do we get from this? Then you show me the advantages. I will come back to this in a second. These are some of the models that we've made recently, and you can see these on, on Stanley one, which is where I am, also on Z Core, Z Solutions, and uh, MCO there. So the models are dotted around in the, in the, in the auditorium. Going into the shoemaking process. In order to make a shoe, we start with a last. The last is on the screen there, that's a nice wooden one I've used for the show. More typically, it would be a plastic one. And in traditional terms, we would then draw a drape over the top of that. This is a, a little picture of the last being made. It's made by hand, it's a manual process, very highly skilled. We're one of the few companies in the world, one of the few shoe brands that still does this, and we still train people in place. So we want to retain control. Once the last is completed to our satisfaction, we scan it using a laser scan. That will then go into a, a Remix database and we're able to use it in, in downstream processes. So, we have a last, and typically we will draw a drape. So this is a drape on the screen in my hand. A drape is a vacuum form piece of plastic. In the old world, that would then be sent to a factory. So we put that in a box, sell it by DHL, it would cost £25, it would take four days, and then the factory would start to make a prototype. In the new world, currently we would digitise that. We could scan what we find digitising work to better for us, or we could draw those lines in three dimensions on a black on the screen in the software. But, and this is a big but, for shoemaking, when you're holding the last or you're holding the shoe, people will always twist and turn and look in different directions. And we found that the screen doesn't allow us to do that with so much control. So again, we want the control, we want the, the tactile mode, we want the old and the new working together hand in hand. Once we've got the data into the system, we can then go to a, a 2D render or a 3D render or we can go to a print. So this is a, this is a Z-Core print, and the slide immediately afterwards is the, the real shoe. So we get to the point where it's difficult to distinguish between 
the real and the fake, the virtual and the real. I'll just go back one and then forwards again. It's quite a good representation of what we've got to Now, to the benefits. We've got benefits, reduced product development lead time. We can very quickly see what the finished shoe will look like in our hand, on the floor, on the table, in a presentation. We have improved concept visualisation. In a conservative business like ours, very often there's people that have some, some ideas that want to put forward. But typically, if we make a shoe that way, it takes time, it takes money, and it may not go anywhere. So, if we can make a shoe, make a model that does the job, then we can easily see what it needs to look like. We can easily communicate with offshore manufacturers and offices. We've got a Z-Core printer in, in the China office, the same print file they printed out, they've got the same as we have. We can get, for clerks, this is we can get quicker buying or interest in products. Very often what I find is there will be two or three ideas for a given product. And if I can find a way of modelling the interesting one, the wild one, the one that we wouldn't normally make, I can get people to see it and either then discard it or in some cases bring it forward and say, this is what we need. So it's a very good advantage, very good examples of that within the business. Finally, cost saving. It makes money. It saves money. It helps bottom line. These two products, I'm sure that the ladies in the audience won't be that blown away by these two. But these two products were developed after the main range of shoes was developed. So shoemaking works on a cycling system. We worked on two seasons a year, autumn, winter, and spring, and summer. After we completed the autumn 11 season, we found that there was a gap. There was a gap in the range and we needed something quick. So the designer was tasked with designing shoes, the design was completed, the models were completed on screen, we reviewed them within a week, within another few days we had printed models, and within six weeks we had sales samples in the markets around the world. So from a designer sketch to a signed off approved product in six weeks. Now normally in, in Clarks that takes about six months. Now these two shoes between them generated four orders of 30,000 pairs putting quite a large profit on the bottom line that would not have existed without this process. So these two shoes alone have paid for the entire department comfortably for a year. What do we think the future holds? The future, I don't know what you make it. What I do know is that we're working to move it forward, to move it quickly. We're using our imagination. I think it can go on and on and on. And I want to be a very, probably a key part of that for Clarkson. Thank you.